It's not the way things are. It's not the way, it's not the way things actually appear to the eye. Yeah. Um, but I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. And for something like this, you see how you have a beautiful edge there. And, and normally when we work, I would say, great job. Yeah. But in, in this case, you see how it generally goes in this direction? Uh-huh. And I would just oversimplify it. That's all. That's all. You see how you did this area right here? Uh-huh. That's, that's all you have to do. Just that. Do that everywhere. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could lift it up, I guess. Or I could go over it. Or maybe turn. I, I did another one. I thought mine was maybe even a little bit too. I did this 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 third one later on. I think I blocked it out even more. Because we move on up there. Um, but but everything else is just fine. I mean, any kind of. Uh, other types of colors you want to use, just fine. And that's certainly uh, your call. What do you mean by other colors? Well, let, let's say if you wanted more variation to the screen or something, you, you could certainly, if you wanted to, you could certainly come in and glaze something on the reddish side here and there, or maybe on the oh, 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 okay. bluish side. Little glazes might might help to wake up an area if it gets a little boring for you. Yeah, I was having trouble with the gray. The green. Yeah, it gets thin and um. Uh, it's almost always variety. So I would say just like I did here, like you have kind of red, yellow, and blue. Maybe even come in with a little yellow here and there, and just especially up here in the foreground. Really, uh, really makes it come forward. Like these yellows you put up in here are beautiful. I would just maybe put some of those down here in the foreground. Okay. Small things like that. I like this move by the way, how you came this way with it. I decided not to do that, but I like the way I like the way yours looks, yeah. You've got this to this, this, to this, to this. You got some blockiness in there. Yeah. It's just a question of how, how much. And all, all, all I'm saying by this critique is how much, how far do you want to go with it? Yeah. Just to question that. Okay. Obviously, that would try again. <laughs> well, I mean, try again if you like it. It's a nice piece. Um, um, thanks. It, yeah, uh, no, I, I, I want to get the, I want to get the feel of doing more yeah. blocky. <laughs> it's very hard to. Yeah, so oversimplifying your masses. It, it is. It's not easy, but it will help you so much in everything. Okay. Well, not everything. In painting. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oops, I got a little piece of I'm going to read it. Okay, now we're all done. Here's Toby. 
Cezanne-like. That looks very Cezanne-like. So, oh, okay, so up here is where you're having a problem, where it got a little bit... Yeah, I, I tried to fix it the best I could. I it it looks fine. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you didn't say anything, I wouldn't know. Yeah, I like to see you, you, oops, you came back here and, and showed that edge a little bit. You popped that, so that you made that darker than that, and that's why that popped. And you made the uh, sky darker than the mountain, than the light on the mountain, and that's what popped that. Yeah, just a little contrast. Yeah, and I love your little uh, directional. Directional strokes really show off the geometry. Mm -hmm. And if anything, I could I think you could have even gotten more geometric. Like just really, really push that geometry. Really push it. Colors and everything is very, very um, Yeah, really kind of blocking this off. We'll work more on that too, but um, when you get really in, very much in control of your masses, that's when things start happening for you. you know, like the tree won't give you a problem anymore because you just see it. You, you no longer see leaves. You start seeing the whole thing. I think your most success, I mean, it, it's a nice piece, but your, I think your most successful thing, and it looks to me like the thing you might have learned the most on, is these marks. Everywhere, you're doing the, the blue uh, weight shadow. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You just locked into that. <laughs> you know, that, that's your, intuit, your intuition saying, this is something I want to know. So you, you use it as an experimentation. That's, that's how you learn. I love them. I love, them. I especially love the stereo right up in here. It's great. But on the mountain, it works really great. Now you look at these artists like even Edgar Payne, who's a California impressionist, um, uses these marks all over. And you can see how it's a very successful way to turn form. And he's a pretty realistic artist too, so. A very realistic artist. So, any questions? I think it looks great. Color's great. Fun, fun um, little project today. It's very nice. Yeah. Still doing it. Good. I guess it, one more quick little thing. If you were to make some of these a little bit darker, I think we'd get a little bit more distance out of it. Although I have to say, it doesn't bother me the way it is now. You like see this dark right here? Uh -huh. you put in there. Maybe a couple of spots of that here and there. That would be fine. Um, oh, I was uh, afraid I was going to be dark there, so I stopped. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You decided to get kind of tangent up here. Well, <laughs> way too tangent, especially with the small tree. I'm, I'm just seeing it now that there has to be some sky between the mountain and the tree. Mm -hmm. I like that. So I, will, I would do that over again with, without the tangent. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If things begin to get a little confused, like maybe right in here, um, that that can be an issue. And you know, just as long as you know that the way to solve that issue is to take this maybe either up a little bit, or maybe take some of your foliage here and. Uh, take some of that up and over the mountain here. Right. If, 
either you go over it or you uh, but my problem is what you said earlier i do not contain myself <laughs> i do not contain yourself Right, I did not contain my, my foliage. I even the one to the left, I should have not gone down so low with the foliage. Well, I, I don't know. You look at some of his, he goes pretty low. So Right, but the subject of this I think is more the mountain the mountain than the okay. And I noticed in some of his he's actually using it to sort of frame the mountain in a way. great subject to do and I love the, the themes of doing paintings after the mountain. Yes. I love it. You Good. could even do a whole series of classes on that theme. They can you know that might be a great workshop, huh? Yeah. Uh, maybe go over two different masters in a day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, but this, you know, I'm not very satisfied with it, but um, I learned a lot. Yeah, it's something I'll try to do again. So thank you. Well, anyway, the mountain looks really good as far as all the blocking out the trees. Mm -hmm. You know, you can take your masses down here in the vegetation pretty darn well. Mm -hmm. You see the way you're blocking things off? So you're not, you know, a, an amateur will try to render every little leaf. Or they'll be in there with strokes in there and I see your, your value differentiation. The directional strokes make you feel like you're going uphill here. These ones going downhill there. out of it. We talked about it in a few other people's paintings. Maybe a little bit lighter in values back then, but you know, it's more about the aesthetic than it is about, about academia. And this right here looks 1,000% big now. Look at that. It's all that area right there. That, that's a very good just master copy right there. Not that you had to, but I mean, you certainly learned the aesthetic. Um, let's see. This is a good containment of mass. See? Not only a good geometric shape, but a good containment of the mass. I mean, so she didn't really edge this out at all, but over here she came in with quite a quite a bit of edge in here. And you see how maybe maybe that's a little too much edge, I don't know. If you if you were to simplify this area, and maybe, maybe what 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 maybe is too much edge? edge? Rob? What was that? What is the too much edge? Oh, like right right in here maybe on the tree. Oh. So just for oh. this aesthetic, normally in a painting that would be just fine, but just for this aesthetic, I might actually simplify a little bit more of that and really kind of. Really right. kind of wedge out there, and then have a little bit of edge. A little bit of edge is fine. Mm -hmm. Get a little, little, little dark shadow on the side of this. It looks like we're hitting this one really good. No big deal. The, 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 the biggest deal is 
Did you get the exercise? Yeah, absolutely you did. Right here, on the whole mountain, great. Um, if anything, some of this, some of the vegetation gets a little busy for, for uh -huh. this exercise, you know. I, right. I stress, I stress yeah. with this exercise because um, other times you maybe you're not busy enough, you know, or a or something. So, but I might actually, you know, come back and just really treat some of these areas very basic. Very basic. Yeah, smooth out some of those extra yeah. fresh marks. Yeah, can't really do it on the light side, but it's okay. Anyway, it's just all about simplicity. Nice work. Any questions? No, just it was really fun to try to uh, put in these brush marks. I know, huh? Yeah, so Aren't they great? Make, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just call them directional. It's really fun to try to. I just, I, I love to copy. <laughs> yeah. Which I think is okay because uh, how I'm learning. Yeah. There's something about that. Mocking. Co copying and mocking. Okay, thank you. Right. Well, thank you, Well, Good luck. That's another thing I used to do when I used to watch birds. I would, um, I'd draw them and I'd try to copy them. And then I'd, I'd try to get their bird calls down. So. Okay. Be good, wow. You know, huh? Okay, we're on Diane. Hey, hey. You there, Diane? Yeah. Okay. Now, you, you, you do get a good sense of the mass in here, and the light, and the shadow, which is just fine. I had fun. Um, the mountain this, looks very, I, very, I did, very Suzanne. I didn't contain the foliage very well. <laughs> Well, you mean here? I think you did. What do you mean up here? Uh, well, on the bottom, too. I, I didn't uh, get as blocky as I wanted to. Right, as blocky. The mountain looks plenty blocky. Yeah. So, you, so what you could do is just come in. Um, it's not like it has to be finished. Oh, let's see. I actually started another one. Oh, you did? <laughs> Learning from this one, yeah. It's not finished, but I'm actually using a, a square brush, a flat brush. Yeah, you know, that might have been a, that, that's a great idea. That's, that's how I'm doing the second one, is with a flat brush. It forces me to just, you know, put a stroke down and move on. Yeah. And just, just try to see these masses as, as blocky and, and yeah. sort of, some people call it architectural, some people call it structural. Yeah. I, I like to use the word geometric. I've even heard people call it synthetic. Because it's not like they actually look. It really is a more... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I, I think if you're trying to make it look like a human being did the painting, mm -hmm. then this is a good way to do it. Because, you know, you're wow, blocking things out like this. But this is, and I've seen people get so blocky that it looks... It looks pixelated, and then it looks like a computer did it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so this, this is, you can overdo anything. But, uh, yeah, blocking it there, I would group that and, and into a big... Mm-hmm, yep. Yeah. Mass my shapes better. It's, it's this right here, you know it, you're doing it. So, so that bottom foliage, I could just maybe go over with a sure. kind of a glaze of maybe a darker color just to get those yeah. shadows, that shadow mask shapes. Yeah. yeah, and now that you're doing another one, why not, you know, they, they become less precious. Yes, yeah, right. definitely. If you just do one, then it's kind of precious. But if you do two or three or four, first of all, by the time you get to your past your second one, you're usually loose. And then you'll, yeah. you'll just you'll let the aesthetic fly, and then... 
Maybe you'll come back to your other one when you quit. You didn't feel so fairly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a strong word. Good word. No, good word. Oh. <laughs> okay. Nice knowledge. <laughs> Okay. Well, thanks for this. This was fun. I really enjoyed it. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> All right. And fifty. Very blocky. Very very blocky. Okay, I'm here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Bottom with the mountain. It's and I was trying to do those angles, but it, I don't think it works very well. The shadows don't lay down. Yeah, if, if you think, think of, you know, sometimes you have to really exaggerate it, but think of the direction of the form, and you're doing it. I mean, you've got it, obviously. You, you've got these directional strokes going that way, and these ones going that way. Some of them might actually be this way, really severe. Some of these, some of these shadows might, whoops, sorry. Some of these shadows might be actually more like this, more like, more like that. So sometimes, uh, and you'll see artists do this too. Um, they'll actually lay down lines like this on the, on the work. You can see it oftentimes if they, if they haven't covered it up, you can see it right in there. And then that'll give you the direction. And actually, I just do it with those little hash marks. I'll actually just throw down a couple of hash marks that are giving me the right direction, and I'll just do, 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 do. And then I'll come back to the other side and make sure that those going downhill. Uphill. You can put an arrow on it if it helps you. Mm -hmm. Downhill here. The colors and values are extremely significant. You, you even got the, the atmosphere out of it because these are all light in, in the blue side and these are all darker and much more on the, um, on the warmer side. So if you were to pop a couple of reds, reds and yellows up in here, and you're doing it, but even more saturated if you wanted to, it would even come more into the foreground if that's what you're looking for. Um, so I might kind of wedge some of these like we did right here. See, this is a wedged off area, like that. I might, on some of these more wet into wet areas, it, you know, for the sake of the aesthetic, just to kind of wedge some of those off a little bit. Okay. Little, quick little glaze, no big deal. Maybe some serious oranges into the side, into this uh, right side here. orangey thing. Kind of make that come forward a little bit. This looks pretty bright all by itself. So I might um, <clears throat> kind of it would be casting a shadow maybe there and there and then maybe come back with something a little bit darker on the shadow side. Mm -hmm. might, even be, might even be a little cast shadow over there. Anyway, small little things like that. Okay. And right here is a really good area for your signature. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. You're just begging. Sign me. Okay. All right. Thank you. Very blocky. Very, very. <clears throat> now, I think you could have even got blockier with your foliage up in the trees here. Yeah. But, <clears throat> wow. I mean, you know these artists called the Futurists? Okay. Have you heard of them? They're, they're uh, you know, right around the turn of the century when all these different styles were going on. There was this style called the Futurists. Oh, okay. 
you know, they're very, very akin to the uh, uh, Matisse. What, what is it called? The Wild Bee. What is it called? The, I don't know why it's not coming to my brain, but anyway, that style. Anyway, oh. um. <coughs> oh, Bove. Oh, thank you. Bo. Oh, Bove. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know why I named it. I'm sorry. So, anyway, wow. I, I yesterday I spent an hour looking at a lot of the paintings of Cezanne. <clears throat> oh, good for you. So I got really, really inspired. Um, I've, I've never really spent time to really uh, analyze his paintings, but mm. they really speak to me. Not the oh, watercolors. Um, yeah, more the oils. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful colors too. Um, you know, I like everything on this painting, uh, and I, I even like your trees, and I like the way they complement all of the the blockiness in here. But I would say for this aesthetic, I would probably push the trees a little bit more blocky, um, just because just just for the sake of this aesthetic. Not that they're not done well. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, they're too organic. Yeah. Now, you, you do have some pretty organic looking stuff down here, but the way you block it out feels, uh, you know, feels cubulinary. Is that a word? Okay. <laughs> cubulinary. Okay. <laughs> it feels cuby. So that, that's about all I have to say. I mean, I, I'm glad you got something out of it. That's great. I mean, you know, that's the whole reason to do the whole thing. If you can get one little thing out of an exercise, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this was Think fun. of all the lessons. Yeah, you're right. I need to work on the foliage. The trees need to be more linear. Yeah, for, for the sake of this aesthetic, and, and that's the only reason why. By the way, what you did in the sky is great. Look at this. The red, yellow, and blue right there. Love it. Love it. Thank you. I wish I would have done it. <laughs> well, it was inspired by Suzanne. He did a lot of that on the sky. Yeah. So I thought, well, let's see what that looks like. So, you know what really helped me, though? <clears throat> I mean, I know it's uh, the style, but learning how to use colors better to understand the different nuances of shades and different colors and saturation is really it's helping me out. It's, it's becoming easier. It, it's, a, it's a great thing. Um, and in a piece like this, you can work on your color more because you're not having to hyper-render. You, know, you can yeah. Just play with the arrangement of the color and be more of a, a, a composer. Yeah. A lot of times when we're copying, uh, it's not it's a lot less forgiving. So, but look, you you got your sky and you got a red, you got a yellow and a blue. You got your numb, you got a red, you got a yellow, and you got a blue, and a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> but the, the thing is, is that You've got the variety. If, if you have a red, yellow, and a blue within a mask, then you usually have it. I, I haven't seen one where I didn't have it. I've had some. I've done some pretty yucky ones, but at least it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. You, you got red, yellow, and blue with it. It's it's, it's exciting. Thank you. Good. Yeah. That's fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheetah marks off your painting here. Just cheetah dots. All right. You there, Suzanne? Yes, or I am. Oh, okay. Oh, you really dry brush. Are you working on rush, uh, rough paper? Uh, yeah, I worked on rough paper and I tried to get it as wet as I could and then I started flowing. And <laughs> so, anyway, it's, I probably should use a different paper for this to do the. 
and the flat rush idea was a good idea. So I, I started a second one, so I took this one off. Okay. Just to, um, because I, I get too detailed. So I'm trying to go back to just doing the shape. Yes. And this is a very good, this exercise is a very good exercise for you. Yeah. So I figure I need, I need to do about five of them. <laughs> yeah. Even my second one. I'm, I lose track of, when I get the shapes, I can draw them. Yes. And I, okay, I know exactly what it is. And then once I start painting them, I lose track of which, which were the up ones and which were the down ones. So uh -huh. I think I need to do a paint by number thing and do <laughs> one of the downs and one of the ups, or, uh, you know. Well, remember I what I said, um, if you put a line there, or how about like this? If you put a line there with, with arrows, with arrows on that's pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you put lines in there with arrows on it, it's like that. So a couple, you don't have to have arrows, but I mean, because just the direction of the line will do it for you. But if you just put some, just put some lines in there that are kind of going with the direction, you'll, you can even do this with your pencil underneath. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to, because I completely lose track of where I am, and I get into the color, and the, and then I can, I, then I've lost <laughs> what was supposed to be light and what was supposed to be dark. Yeah. So you're not using a whole lot of directional strokes, although I do see a few back here, yeah. I mean, now, this way of handling your tree can be absolutely gorgeous, and, and it is. Normally, and, and reaching <laughs> points. <clears throat> I know, and I know. Teaching aesthetic is not easy, and learning <laughs> aesthetics is not easy. I, I spend a lot of time on my own just trying to figure all, out all that stuff. And really, sometimes I'll look at an aesthetic that I think is so simple and it really kicks my butt. I mean, <laughs> by the way, I, I like how you're using the, um, the shadows to turn the direction, to give us the direction of the tree. It's very beautiful and natural. So, all I, you know, all I have to say here, I mean, your painting is great. There's no question. <laughs> Let's just gather things up like this and walk them out a little bit more. Yeah. Back there. You could so do it right on top of this painting. If you like your painting like it is, do another one. I mean, it's a nice painting. But, see, really, really... Exagger I want you to really exaggerate this. Okay. Be yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. And you're, and you're blocking out of things. I mean, I think that's why I mean, Cezanne gets pretty ridiculous, but not not like uh, not like Picasso or Brock or something. Really. Uh-huh. It's up to the next generation to get even more ridiculous. I don't even know. I call it driving the theme home, you know? Drive that theme home. Really show me the geometry in there. Right. Right, that is going to go very well done. Well, I'm going to work on blockism. <laughs> yeah, there you go, blockism. <laughs> okay, thank day. you. Okay, thank you. Isn't that weird, me, me telling somebody to get less natural. <laughs> it's not easy getting getting less natural. Right, Henry? Hi. Okay, so you're very blocky back here. Very, very, look at, can you guys feel the, look, look at the, um, good at doing trees. 
I'm telling you, don't do them so good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Maybe, uh, and by the way, you got that little tangent right here, and it doesn't bother me at all. I said, you know why? I think it's because you put so little information into the background. I think it's a wonderful lesson. Thank you. I never thought I could uh, do this without your guidance. Oh, good. Yeah. Try some blocking trees. Okay. Thank you. I, you know, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't necessarily even correct this painting. I might, I might just do some other trees. Just so you get into it. Then I, I already touched it up uh, as you spoke. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that okay now? Yeah, I, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe even more. Oh, okay. More you mean more solid color, right? Yeah, more solid. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Using a little line around the outside. Now that's something I, I don't mind at all, um, as long as we hold we hold to the aesthetic. Like you know, one of these days maybe we'll do a Van Gogh copy, and it would be like the counter of this aesthetic which would be very sort of roly-poly, you know, he's doing all the roly-roly-roly things. So. It's a throwaway, Rob. <laughs> yeah, I almost didn't mail it to you. I got lost. I mean, I, you know, I was kind of looking at, it shows how much I rely on the record photo, because I, I was just winging it, and I just, you know, I just, it's a mess. So. You know, it's almost, it's almost better to not even refer to the photo. <laughs> the, more, the more I kept doing it, the worse it got. <laughs> well, you know, all, all I'm looking for is just containing your masses in a very geometric way. Maybe I should have poured a cup of water over it and see what happened. I'm just kind of wiggle it around here. You don't know how many times I've said that on my own paintings. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I, how am I going to get out of this? Help me. I'm, I'm looking for something to, um, some way to solve this painting, though. I've actually done that before, and it worked, just so you know. But I tell you, I don't have a very high success rate at that. <laughs> I can't even cut it in half and save it. <laughs> well, I started look. I try to go online and look at Cezanne stuff, and, and then you know that was just making it making me more confused. So I just uh, I said, "Oh, what the heck?" And I started outlining the mountains. I figured if it's a throwaway, I'm just going to have some fun. So <laughs> there you go. Why not oh. learn something? So you so you learn a little bit about line. That's great. And you know, all, all I'm looking for is a little more oversimplification of some of these forms. That's all. Just yeah, I have too many little shapes in that, so I was so I try to combine those and fewer shapes, and it just it just got worse and worse the more I kept doing messing around with it. So back here, right here, is, is yeah. See, see what you did with it? You you you, you kind of blocked that out probably did it without even thinking about it too much and that's maybe that's what maybe you just overthought it um yeah i would just block things out a little bit more just block things out. over simplify this painting that's what i would do you go over with gouache or try another one if you like but uh ridiculously over simplify this I don't know, maybe I take a maybe I take a sponge and just try to scrub the whole thing off in the middle, but it's it's not worth it. Better off starting from scratch. <clears throat> yeah. Oh wow. Well, I did three of them. I just wanted to let you know I, I didn't miss class. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so just oversimplify. Okay. Thank yes. you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Okay, Marie. Aha. Hi. Okay. Hi. I kind of feel like I missed the aesthetic completely. <laughs> Not Sorry. completely, not completely. You mean the mountains that I have it. But you got it in the mountains, you got it in the rocks. But uh, yeah, the rest of it's like mush. Yeah, you, this yeah. right here is, is more pretty realistic. I mean, this is, yeah. I mean, you know, you can paint a gorgeous tree, no question about it. It's, it's, yeah. hard, it's hard to tell people who can paint gorgeous paintings to not be so gorgeous. <laughs> I kept on looking at the photo, and you're right. I, you know, I, I needed to simplify the shapes into yeah. blocky. You know, I, I get the idea now that I've listened to these critiques, and it will be maybe one that I will try over again just for the heck of it. Well, it's it's not like I ever I, I just leave these aesthetics alone. I'll keep pushing them. I, I, and, um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't talk enough about aesthetics in this class. I, I want to talk more. Because, like, you know, when we copy a Zorn painting, we're learning a lot about technique. But you're not learning a whole lot about style. Yeah. Now, here, you're learning more about style. It's not so technical. You, you've got great technique. It's almost like I'm telling you, it's, it's almost like you're a racehorse and I'm, I'm holding back on the reins. <laughs> I gotta say, slow down, really. No, it's just, I really, I think um, you were about three steps ahead of me when you got into the foliage, and so by the time I got into the foliage, I was really looking at the photo, and I thought, I'm, you know, getting into it a little bit, <laughs> yeah. getting carried away, but, um, okay. yeah, I don't This is not, not a bad painting by any, by any standard. Yeah, but it, 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 it's not achieving what I think the main idea was of the lesson. Right, right. And so, so a simple painting, you know, you could have this hyper-realistic, amazing painting over here without a lot of style. And, you know, some viewers are looking for style. Right. And, um, um, so they'd be actually be turned off by the photorealistic painting and turned on by the hyper-stylized painting. And, you know, I, I think a, a good balance of both is good. So, you know with it. Otherwise, very nicely done. I mean, I can see a little bit more warms in the foreground, possibly. Mm -hmm. Heads and things forward, but it does work. Okay. No, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, and we got Gina. Very, very safe man. Wow. <clears throat> now, see, he didn't this is delicious. Um, this is oil. It's acrylic. Acrylic. And it's painted with a palette knife, which is the perfect tool for Cezanne. A absolutely. Have you seen some of those Cezanne, uh, Cezanne uh, uh, palette knife paintings? Yeah. <clears throat> because you get that blockiness just because of the tool you're using. Yep. You can't help it. It's like in instant Cezanne. Look, mm -hmm. look at the strokes. And she's got three or so colors on there and different values on the stroke. So in one stroke, she's getting the direction, she's getting variation in the color, um, and she's getting that wedged off blocky look because she's using a palette knife. So just by the palette knife alone, you're getting it. Now you might ask, well, we're doing watercolor, can you? Guess what? And uh, sometimes, I, mean, I wonder if uh, Hector even did it today, but some, sometimes Hector uses a palette knife when he does watercolor and gets this. You can use a palette knife. I didn't even think to do that, but anyway, um, beautiful, nice. Very, very much, very much the aesthetic. <clears throat> so very, very much about the lesson right here. Yeah, blocking, I mean, aesthetically speaking, you're dead on, dead on. Lock onto it like a, like a, like a crocodile. 
It's funny, I never liked Cezanne as much as after I tried painting it. Then I really appreciated it and thought it was fun. Oh, and that's great. So, so then, let's say sometimes, you know, like, see these light shapes you have right here on the, um, on the mountain? Mm -hmm. So I could see possibly on some of your light shapes, mm -hmm. yeah, knifing on in, in that direction, very much the same as your mountains, just, just like you did here, just for value. I could see a little value there and possibly a little direction in there. That's about, I mean, really nothing to say about this painting. I mean, that's awesome. That's great, right? Look at that. And that's, that's cushion style. And you'll get, you know, say lots of, you know, especially different countries. If you look at any sort of Latin country, usually they love, love, love style. Well, it's funny when you get up into England and North America, and I don't know why it is, but more more about the uh, that's just something I've known. I, by studying art history, you'll see those two ways of thinking: the north of Europe, the south of Europe, or whatever. But you can see it in the New World here, very much the same, or different places in the world where style is really pushed. You know, if you've ever looked at much of Indian painting, we should probably try some of that because it's amazing. It's amazing style, amazing color, and amazing um, rendition as well. It's very, very articulate. It's really interesting. So anyway. Rob, may I yes. ask a question? You keep talking about style as yeah. if this is opposed to aesthetic. And I... Opposed to aesthetic, it, it is style and aesthetic is almost the same. Okay. As you opposed know, um, to what, like, like for instance, you could yeah. say um, impressionism is a style, and within impressionism, you have all of these aesthetics. And one of the aesthetics would be a very organic type of aesthetic, you know, or let, let's say post-impressionism. Okay. Um, so Van Gogh would be very, very, um, very much in the sort of organic aesthetic, whereas Cezanne would be very geometric. You see? So. Right. Okay. Thank you. I know. I, I, I do. I, I, I throw those words around, and so do a lot of other artists, and we probably should be a little bit more careful about the way we use them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. We've got Barbara. Something. Okay. Okay. Now, let me get my little thing here. Okay, I can see. This is pretty well blocked off. Um, maybe a little. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little darker down there, and you don't have to use black. I'm only using black to get dark, but okay. You know, blue or whatever, or green would work fine with me. And I could see this being a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more blocky. Okay. Now, a lot of times I'll start off my foliage like this, giving me all kinds of sort of. Uh, organic stuff to it, and then I'll come in with this sort of blocky shadow. So you could use what you have there for the light and come in and, and really get that, that um, less, less organic look and a little bit more geometric look. Okay, yeah, I lost that. <laughs> Just, just come back into it. Maybe let the shadows define okay. the forms that you already have a good value for light. Okay. And just, uh, and you know, you don't have to even go by the photograph. You can just make them up. You know who else would have been really good to look at for, for this aesthetic is Maynard Dixon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Southwest artist. You know, he 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 really hyper oh. over over does the whole thing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the Southwest artists do. They do the same aesthetic in a different manner. You know, they have their own way of doing it. Mm hmm. I thought this was going to be easy, and it was a lot harder than I anticipated. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. And other than that, maybe maybe some of your values in the foreground can be more contrasty. See, you have a lot of contrast in the background. So maybe a little mm -hmm. more contrast in the foreground. Okay. Really pop the darts on this tree. You want it to come forward? Something like that. Okay. Yeah. About it. What about glazing some more colors down into the foliage, like more oranges or reds? Yes, definitely. Like these right here, this yellow right here, and this orange really help. I could uh -huh. see, I could see some real, some real serious ones in here. Right. Yeah. And as you put them down, maybe put them down in a, in a more blocky type manner too. Okay. So you really get that uh, that plane. The plane's going for it. Okay. Yeah, and I like the idea of using the flatter brush too. I think that would. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think he used a flat brush, but that might have been a good idea for today. That might have helped people a little bit more. And I was thinking about it too. Didn't you? But I wanted you to get those broken, those, those, uh, those strokes. Oh yeah, the strokes in the directional head. strokes. Yeah, so. exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, you could probably get them with a, probably get them with a, with the corners of a flat brush. So, okay. All okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. <clears throat> and Judy. All right. See so now that's very much. That's very much the aesthetic. Really? Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I feel like it was just so overworked it, but I'm going to do it again. Because I, I just got lost a few times. Uh-huh. Well, that, that's okay. Totally okay to get lost. I mean, just like, for instance, see this tree right here. Okay. We've got, we've got the bottom and the side and just really simplify that in a very geometric way. Boom. And now you have the light up here and the shadow there. Mm -hmm. You do the same in here. Mm -hmm. and the same in there. And then, <clears throat> like I said earlier, I mean, if you want to, or maybe you want to start another one, or but if you wanted to, you could certainly come into some of this with white and then use the white with okay. directional strokes to it. Oh, interesting. That's a good idea. Now, if you've ever looked at uh, Edgar Payne, he does this. Yeah. In fact, look at his gouache. If you can find an Edgar Payne gouache. Okay. Uh, you'll see he absolutely does it. And it is very, very blocked out. Very, um, very, very geometric. Yeah, that would be yeah, that would be helpful because I feel like I started and then I got a little dark and was going over things too much. But yeah, I'm gonna try that. Yeah. It was a great exercise. It was a lot of fun. I like the shape. Good. Even on the even even on some of this, coming on the light side, with some of these strokes. Okay. Or, I mean, there's so many artists that do this. In their own way, they do a geometric thing in their own way. Uh, yeah, it's weird. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Katie. That's me. Hey, hey. <laughs> we should be happy with that. Really? Don't you think so? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Well, you're blocking out your forms. I see your, I see your, your lights and shadows extremely simplified on the mountain. The lights and shadows extremely simplified and very geometric in yeah. the, in the foliage. Do you like style? I don't know what it is. 
Yeah, you do. No, I don't really. <clears throat> well, so why do you ask the question? Maybe, maybe you think maybe, maybe you're overthinking it. <laughs> That's what it's possible. <laughs> So why do you ask the question? Because, it, uh, it, you know why? This is funny. Because I know you're, you're usually you know, really into color. And right. that tells me, I mean, I, I sound like a psychotherapist here, I'm not, but uh, <laughs> I, I know I'm the, I'm the same way. Because it tends toward the intuitive side of the brain, and yeah. so does style. So if you'll notice, an analyst will go toward the rendition, whereas a an intuitive person will go toward the the style. And that, it doesn't mean that we're not a bunch of both, you know. Yeah. It's just you, know, everybody has tendencies, and I I I don't know what I am, but um, I, I I love both. But I'd say at this stage in my career, I'm a lot more more into style. But um, I'll say that you seem like you're really getting the style thing here. You really, you, well, you caught it on everything. You, you could look the way you block this out, perfect. The way yeah. you block these out, perfect. Very simple. The way you block these out, perfect. I could see possibly a little more. I, I can tell that you were really thinking about the style more because your color isn't as adventurous as it usually is. No. Mm -mm. But you are doing it here, look. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. So at this point, I think I would go around it, doing a lot, a lot more of this. Okay. Play, play with color. Okay. You're doing a little bit more in here, play play with color. And yeah. maybe, if anything, maybe block this tree out a little more. Okay. Yeah. A little bit more. Interesting. Yeah, I thought it was fun. It was interesting well, good, exercise. good. Yeah. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ralph. Thank you. <clears throat> Francis. Got the, oh, you got one. The directional strokes. Let me see. Let me get up in here. There we go. Lots of directional strokes. So this lesson looks like a lesson for you in directional strokes. <laughs> Why not? You need to do a lot of them. Everybody needs to do a lot of them. A lot of lessons in everything. Everything. Well, you know, maybe your intuition was just telling you, I want to get, I, I like, I, I want to hack up a painting here, man. I want to I get in there and use my little hack marks. Well, and I did a second one after I did that one, and I did what you just said. I just said, you know what? I'm just going to paint this. I'm just going to draw the, the, uh, directions like they are, and it's a lot better than the one you're looking at. <laughs> well, it's yeah. okay. So you're 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 learning, you're learning, you're learning. See, I'm seeing the directional strokes this way. You're going uphill that way. You're going uphill this way. I'm sorry, and then downhill this way. Very much in the manner of Cezanne. Uh, <clears throat> Now, one, one thing is that sometimes you'll lose the whole mass if you get too much into the stroke. So what I would do, what I usually do is, you'll, you'll see me do it too, I'll, I'll contain the mass. Let's just say we're just doing the shadow of this. I'll contain the mass first, and then put, put it down in directional strokes like this. Okay. I, I, you know, if I had a bigger brush, I'd be able to do it a little bit better. But I put that down. And then after I do that, maybe I'll throw in a couple of directional strokes or whatever direction I think I want things to go in. But I'll have, um, um, less scattering, more containment. Like, you see how you contain this? Exactly yes. like that everywhere. Oh, okay. And you did it here too. You can see you contain the mass. You drew out the mass, you contain the mass, and then you throw in some directional strokes. I would just do more of that here. I think this stuff up here can get. Uh, I noticed the, the the foliage is flowing. Uh, you know, I, I think it's because 
the mountain is already pretty geometric. It's very chiseled looking. And, and uh, so it would be like me telling you to get, ge I want you to get uh, organic with the mountain, you know? I'm asking you to get geometric with the foliage. It's kind of weird, I know. Now, isn't this a great reason to go down to the Northern Sime and check out a Cezanne and just go, oh, oh, that's what he's doing. Oh. And then you really, after doing a painting like this, or a few, you go down there and you look at them and you're like, wow. I mean, even his oils, I mean, for for uh, Gina that did that big palette knife, I mean, he's got that self-portrait where he, I've never seen anybody lay it down thicker than that. And he did that, what, a hundred and... I don't know, 150 years ago. Um, just thick and juicy. So, okay, so on, you know, maybe just a little bit more containment. You, you contain this one, I think, a lot better than this one. See, this one got a little scattered on you. No biggie. I'll just contain that a little bit more. Contain some more shadows in here. Et cetera. And then, like we said, maybe play with a little variation in the color a little bit more. So you've got this green, maybe glaze. And here's the great reason. You've already got your theme color down there of green. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to mix all these variations on it. If, if, watch, if you just take a yellow, this one's kind of opaque. But see, you can see through it into the green right behind it. So just take some little hints of glazes, glazes of green, uh, Blazes of yellow and maybe blue and maybe red. Oh, okay. And some blue, maybe red or violet or something. And the violet, that's going to be too much. Um, so, some little variations here and there and might might uh, just give you a little bit more yumminess to the color, you know. Keep, keep them. Keeping it a little bit more saturated up here and a little less saturated back there, but still doing it back here as well. You're doing it. I see it. You're very, I see the red, the yellow. Yeah. Okay. More, more I was thinking up in the foliage in foreground. Okay. okay. Yeah, I kind of got lost. <laughs> okay. Thank you, oh. bro. Yeah. It doesn't look lost to me. I mean, just a little containment, a little saturation here and there, a variation of color. Okay, thank you. You got it. That's all. Okay. There's a second one, but you can talk about this one if you want. I'm already playing with it with white. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, I like the second one better. Oh, you did a whole new one. Okay. I did a whole new one. I thought you meant just in your own. Uh... No, so you can take your pick, whichever one you like. <laughs> well, this one looks pretty darn organic, except for the mountain. Yeah. Let's go back to the other one. Okay. Because I was lo really looking for that kind of shelving off of the forms, like you're definitely doing in the mountain. And the yeah. mountain does it uh, just the way it is. Your foliage here in the foreground looks pretty. I like the way you contained your shadows here. Thank you. You got light, medium, and shadow. The only thing I'm looking for is just a little more blockiness to it. Yeah, it just seems incoherent to me. It is. It, it's totally counterintuitive, I know. Yeah. It's just, it's just to see. But that's what aesthetics are. They're, they're, um, they're taking an abstract idea and orchestrating it through a piece. Now, I mean, if you're doing abstraction, it's a whole lot easier. Because you're not having to think about uh, rendering anything. You're just playing with the aesthetic along. Um, which I would, I don't know if it's easier. It's just more, it, it, you don't get as lost. You can yeah, still do a. <laughs> definitely got lost in that one. So, but anyway, I, I think the most successful parts in this one are your mountain and your your vegetation. 
if anything, I would even get blockier with both. Uh -huh. Even blockier. Yeah, okay. I'm going in with white right now, trying to block. Oh, okay. In this one? Yeah. Yeah. Some white. Now, with white, I would actually um, just in the direction of the form, which is kind of uphill like that, I would just. Yeah. That. And then, if you wanted to down here, what you could do is um, come in with some of your yellowy green color or something, and yeah. the same kind of deal. And then with your shadows. But still thinking of the, the overall shape as being kind of more, you know, on the blocky side. Yeah. Really kind of, really kind of blocking those forms out. Yeah. Not that, you, you know, you could draw lines around them if you want to, but I mean, I just drew the line around there to show you that that's what I would, that's mm -hmm. how I would block out the form possibly. Otherwise, you know, I mean, it's nice work. Me too. Yeah, I, I like how you made the shadow of the tree here lighter and the, the, the mountain shadow darker. Um, I mean, realistically speaking, this, this more here is a little bit more correct, but that's my little, my little analytical nerd inside of me. But actually, aesthetically speaking, this is quite gorgeous. <laughs> Especially this tree right here is very pretty. Yeah, I just like that one. has all that rhythm to it. And can you believe I'm always telling you guys to paint rhythm and then today I'm kind of like, <laughs> it's this sort of fragment thing, you know, it's not as rhythmic. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I can pull it back together. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's the idea. Pull it together. Yeah. Pulling it back together. That's a... Um, Good way to think of it. Okay, now you have another one here too. Which one did you want me to do, Hector? Whichever one I want to do? I can't hear you, Hector. The second one. This one? No, the next one. There's another one? Let's see. Uh, this one? This one? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, you, it's funny with your with your little strokes, your little trowel marks and whatever, it still looks like a Hector. <laughs> and that's that's very much you know now there's a thing. If you already have a style but you're still trying to learn in the style of a master or anyone, really, it doesn't even matter who, what the style is. Maybe you're thinking you want to get a little bit of that in your work, and so you do that. So you still block off things and whatever, but you're doing it in, in the way you do it. That's fine with me. I have no problem with that. I'd say, for this aesthetic, maybe you're a little bit. Maybe you could do even more blocky blockiness, and less um, organicness. I mean. As a piece all on its own, it works. It's a nice piece. I, would, I might do another one. I, I don't know if I'd work on top of this. Um, the first one, I tried doing more of that, the feeling of Cezanne. Because yeah. I really love his watercolors. Yeah. So yeah. I that's more flatter uh, and as blocky as I can get. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Some of us that don't have it in us. It was hard for me. I, I never had to work at organic stuff. Never. You know, I remember when I used to do murals. They, they, I, when I first when I first started, it took me a long time to really get good at the flat graphic stuff. Uh -huh. But boy, they put me on the clouds and the trees and the people uh -huh. and anything right. to do with nature and I'm gone you know it's just funny everybody has a tendency so it's uh, yeah you know more blocky colors great composition is great 
I'd go a little bit more hard edge. You know, and a little more blocking. More geometric. Maybe it's, maybe we should all paint with palette knives. You can do it in watercolor, you know. It's weird, but you can do it. Should have Hector give us a demo. <laughs> I, I can do that. I think it, I can actually uh, co-screen share with you sometimes. Well, I was trying to really try to uh, be more transparent with different colors and getting the... Uh, yeah. That's what was in my head the whole time. I didn't think right, right. blocking... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> And then I, words just don't do it. I understand. Yeah, and then I just uh, let it. Okay, I just uh, that's I can, that's what I do. I can't yeah. do anymore. Well, the main thing is that you get something out of it. Yeah, you got these beautiful Cezanne transparencies going on there. This is pretty delicate for you. Yeah, well, and that's why I had uh, Cezanne in. On, on my mind, right? Trying to, so I got something out of it. Yeah. From because I've always loved his work for years. I have yeah. books on him, and I just think the watercolors are so simple yet so complex. Yeah. They're his, very, um, they're very delicate too. Very yeah, delicate. and it, it's he sometimes he one painting would take months to do because he would wait he would wait for each layer each glaze to dry completely before adding the next one wow yeah that's what i was reading about i wonder if he so, did it from plain air then came back and he did play it. yeah he would do it plain air because yeah. it uh some mount sam victoire was outside his door practically same spot, same spot every time you paint. Not a bad view. Yeah. Kind of like looking out of Shelly's back window, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Shelly, you could do this painting every day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And we've got... By the way, have I skipped over anyone? I'm at Joanne right now. Right, well, I'll get to the, I'll get to, George looks like the last one, and then I'll ask you guys if I skipped over anyone. Um, okay, I'm here. I'm here. Right Shelly. There you go. Yeah, I don't, I don't see Shelly. Maybe she's not done yet. Okay. Um, okay. Now you got the, let's see. Let's get my little glazer here. This this feels um let me look at a little bit more. It doesn't go I need it somewhere in between the two, but well, this is good. So it's not really geometric, but you have contained your masses very nicely. Can you see how um like this feels sort of it glides in a more rhythm, rhythmic fashion. Okay. And, and so do these. It's, it's a little more rhythmic. No, I ended up with the I wasn't trying to do that. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't, it's real flat, too. I wasn't sure what to do that. Well, that's okay. Now, the shadows will probably be on this side, on the left side. Oh, okay. And the right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that kind of thing will happen. The more you um, aren't looking at the at the at the thing, and, and in a way, when you're doing style, it's it might be better that you don't look at the thing. Um, now, I just point that out, and I also want to point out that it doesn't really matter to me. I don't care that the light source isn't. Yeah, that, that's where the confusion is. Okay. Yeah, I don't care that the lights. I'm more. I I kind of wish. Uh, you would have pushed some of these, these just angles a little harder, more angles. How would, how would I do that? How would I do that? Um, now you could just oh, you, see whether you're playing with the line right here. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, you mean just make it all sharper and more, okay. A little more angular, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, that sounds like a great idea, I'll try that. Yeah, kind of did it here, just a little more, a little more, just, just a serious angle, so it looks more, a little more geometric. It's not bad, though. Not bad at all. And I can see, like, the, for instance, the underside of this tree. We can see this possibly um, a little more blocked out. Oh, okay. Again, look at Cezanne and the way he does that. Really, really quite. There's little boxes everywhere. There was yeah. a lot looking at that was. Okay. That's a great way to think of it. Little boxes everywhere. That's a, that's a great way, you know. That is a great way to think of it. Like you got a little box of shadow here, right? Sure. Maybe a little box of light over on the light side. I'll send you a picture because it was such a similar thing to what we were painting. Okay. Yeah. When we were painting the same thing. Um, but then I'll send it to you because the way he used the color and then had all these boxes everywhere was really cool. These little rectangles everywhere. Yeah. Oh, that I can even tell by what you, how you're scribbling that, yeah, what it, it gives it more of that feel. Okay. Yeah, and, and it, it's not that hard. Not that hard. Now, I, I see you're shading yours on the right side. I don't care that it's on the right side. I, I care about the aesthetic. So. Yeah, I wasn't even realizing that as I did it. Okay. And you'll see lots of uh, more contemporary artists, they don't pay any attention to perspective or light and shadow. They, they care about the aesthetic. Um, mm -hmm. They're really all about the aesthetic, and this isn't everybody, but I mean, because we still even today have some serious uh, realistic painters, but um, it just depends on what you're doing. But some artists that are really quite into style and, and, and ab abstraction will not worry about things like perspective and light and shade and things like that. They, they're, they're concerned with you know, shape, value, edge, line, you know, color, of course, things like that. Oh, you, you pick your battles, you know. Some of that, some of the trees out darker. Yeah. yeah, 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 easy. It's just not. I, I could just see like for for up here where it's a little foggy. Just come back and give it some some edges and some mass. The shadows will do that. Right. And your paint, your trees are beautiful, by the way. I really love them. And he gets, he can get kind of rhythmic too. I mean, he's not always 100% blocky. I'll send you the, I'll send you the painting. Okay. And then we'll have an idea what to play with. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank yeah. you. done this before, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I, I watched the YouTube last night yeah. on Cezanne, and I, I oh. think I saw like 600 uh, paintings. Oh, you did. Yeah, and so I learned a lot, and uh, I, I, I just love the way you, the, the things you talk about while you de de demo. So I didn't start uh, p painting while you were doing it. Aha. Uh -huh. See, that might be a, a that might be something I want to trend into is something um, giving you more time. Because now, I mean, you know, I can do some, you know, just because I don't need to finish every painting, you know. And I think maybe it stifles some of you because um, I get I get ahead of the game and you're playing catch up all night. So, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> Very, very beautiful uh, rendition. If anything, I would say you're, a, and you, you tend to be a more of an organic type painter anyway. Right, I, I try like to avoid, but. <laughs> maybe a little blockier, that's all. Yeah. Everything else is fine. Mm -hmm. Everything else is fine. And, and, and only for the lesson. Mm -hmm. Not because, you know, for, like for instance, on this painting, I, I would just leave it. It's too finished. It's, it's, it's a finished painting. I would leave it, and you, it looks like you learned a lot about how he uses color and about how he um, um, lays down paint. Uh -huh. 
But now, I would, for the aesthetic, I would really block things out a little bit more. Yeah, how, how, do, how do I end these debates? How do I do? How do I stop? Just sort of, as you're putting down, let's say, let's say this trunk right here. Um, let's say this trunk right here. I might come with a little straighter line and a straighter line. Straight on. Okay. You know, a little more mechanical. Kind kind of like that. Just kind of dink, 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 dink. Oh, yeah. I see. Really, oh, really I see. I, I walking see. things out, yeah. Yes. This, <clears throat> for this right here, I might just kind of oversimplify it. Mm -hmm. Really very, very oversimplified and so on. Very so less edge work. Uh -huh. Yeah. And even a lot of times, and on if you look at the way he does edges, it's almost like he's just showing you the direction of the form. It's not actually a rendition of the uh, of that type of uh, tree. So it's interesting. Yeah, oversimplify it. That's all. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah, I know yeah, you know so, how to do it. So brush strokes follows that that simplification. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Brush strokes strokes too. Definitely, yeah. I mean, let's say for this, for this right here, mm -hmm. I might. You know, really. Yes. Yes. And and. Block it out. He's really thinking blocks, blocks. Mm -hmm. Might occasionally have to just really kind of block it out. Mm -hmm. Maybe use a flat brush. Flat brush, yeah. Yeah. Flat brush. You know, I should. I think I should have done that. You know, we're gonna go. We're gonna. We'll use this aesthetic again. Maybe not as strong as this, but we'll use this aesthetic again. And maybe I'll have you work with a flat brush. We don't do enough of that, so. Okay. And I, I learned uh, y yesterday, she, his portrait, like Suzanne portrait. Yeah. She does really uh, like, like edgy, edgy portrait. Yeah. Like the murder scenes or rape scenes. <laughs> uh, I know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very, very, very strange at that time, probably. And yeah, yeah uh, it's it's a very interesting. Are you, are you talking about Degas? No. You're talking about Cezanne. Cezanne, yeah. And I he, know. I know that uh, there's a Degas called the the rape or whatever. Yeah, it's, he, he it's he's a very a, he, horrible painting. I mean, it's a beautifully done painting, but it's a it makes me feel horrible. But anyway, but um, when I see his uh, landscape scenes, I thought he's uh, kind of. Uh, emotional and stable, but that didn't seem like he was. He was a very bitter person, was all, always controlled by his father. Ugh. So it's uh, it's interesting to know he, that side. Yeah, that is, because uh, a person who is more rebellious has to be that way for a reason. They almost come out, almost yeah. always come from a kind of tortured, upbringing and some people are just rebellious by nature yeah and then they couple that with a torturous upbringing and then uh maybe it takes someone like that to be brave enough to do this kind of artwork you know mm -hmm. especially in a time like that it's just it's, it's so it's, weird we human beings we're just yeah we're very layered all right thank you all right thank you so much all right and we uh all right now i'm seeing some more coming in here uh, there's George. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, George, I mean, it, nice color. Nice intuitive color. See how George just takes the color that is sort of, you know, the warmth of the mountain on the light side and just over exaggerates it and the coolness of the mountain on the shadow side and over exaggerate them. <clears throat> um, and like I say, I think 
the organic stuff in the foreground could even be blockier. Yeah, I even would, blockier. I, it, it was too smudgy, and I tried to make it blockier. Yeah, I mean that's that's really the only the only uh, critique. I mean the mountain is plenty blocky. Maybe some of the shadows, like in this area here. Maybe some of these shadows, you could do like the shadows you're doing back here and you'll see those are. Yeah. More blocky. I just saw it better in the mountain. Yeah, yeah, the mountain is uh, real, real obvious because it's so chiseled. Yeah. So hey, a great way to paint a mountain, right? <laughs> now, I mean, in your actual work, you could use these two techniques. One, one's very getting, playing the organic foreground off the geometric background, and, and actually being very, very close to what it, what you what you actually saw. Yeah. So anyway, nicely done. I, I like this tree a lot. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I mean, nice color. I mean, I've heard of warm, like, cool shadow, but you're going to town with it. <clears throat> okay. And, you know, if you wanted, if you wanted these trees to pop forward a little bit, I might strengthen up and leave a little darker on the shadow side, maybe. Uh huh. Maybe even darker. If you want to, if you care. Otherwise, I think it's great. Now this this right here is so uh, is so dark that if you wanted to put some light planes in it, you could come back with some something kind of like this and shape out some light side, like a light side to somewhere possibly where light would be hitting. Yeah, like yeah, that's one way to handle that. With Opaquely, some, yeah, or, or semi-opaquely. Yeah. Maybe some white gouache mixed. With yeah, yeah. Mix white. You can even just do white gloss, gouache, let it dry, and then come back and glaze in your color over it. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of different ways to handle. It. Some people just mix, mix the color they see in gouache, and then put it down opaquely. Uh, mm -hmm. Whatever works for you. Yeah. As long as you get the result you want. Yeah. All right. Nice work. Thank you. I can see your painting on, I, I can see uh, Hen Henry's little, I can see Henry painting and I can see your painting and his painting. <laughs> That's funny. Really small, I can, I mean, your painting pops really small, like a thumbnail. On my screen, it's about as big as a thumbnail and it's popping. Oh. So let's see, uh, Shelly. All right, Shelly, you, you did another one too, huh? Let's see. Any particular one you want me to critique? Um, no. But I tried getting the palette that is a lighter value and not so yeah. high contrast. The other palette is a little closer there, but, you know, it still has, the mountains got lighter, but the trees are still too dark or something else. And maybe a little more blocky in the trees. Yeah. A little more. Just a little bit more. I tried really hard to keep it blocky. And then I don't did. know. My arm won't it. do it. <laughs> Rocks I can do, but <laughs> isn't that weird to, to paint to paint foliage as if it were a rock? This is an excellent demo. I can't wait to go try and do another one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean just just go sit out on your porch. You you, you have literally this. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that is true. It is literally on your porch. And I love all these little color. Um, well, I, call, I am trying to. I call it suggestive color right in here. These little blues and the greens in here. That's fun. Now this is really fun. Um, these little, look what you're doing with all these little blues. You get this little. The violet in there. 
so th this is what I'm talking about. See how she's seeing this is very geometric. Very geometric. Light on one side. And shadow on the other side. So if anything, you know, maybe go for somewhere you're more saturated. I know you were doing that last time, Rob. Yeah, neat idea. That's good, Rob. I like that. Play, play a little bit more saturation than you're doing. Yeah. That's, that's cool. I like that a lot, Rob. Yeah. I mean, I think if, if I form wise, all the only thing is I, I would just maybe block this up a little bit more. Maybe give it a little shadow. Yeah. I, I don't care if your values aren't really light. Yeah. I need the value. Make the value. Yeah, and really shelf it off. Really shelf it off. I mean. In a very sort of uh, I can hear somebody's TV or something in the background. Make sure you're, everybody make sure you're muted. I don't know who it is. So anyway. Thank you very much, Rob. It's great to hear you, by the way. Hold on, did you hear something? Sorry, and Katie, it was another day for the history books. And I think it's George. Is that George? A few second impeachment of Donald J. Trump. Mute yourself, it might, George. It might be George's. I did. It looks like his mic is on. Yeah, I, I muted him. Unfortunately, <laughs> you see what you see what happens, everyone. So I have to actually get out of this to do that. And now I have to get back in it. Okay. Let's see. And now we're at. Oh, we we uh, okay. Caroline, I'll look at that later. We already created PTQ. And Lynn. Okay. All right. What do you think, Lynn? We got lost in the vegetation. So I think sketching and drawing his way of blocking out things would be really helpful to me. Yeah. See, so you got these, these blocked out pretty good back here. I could see even blockier on the mountain. I mean, you see how you really push things down here in the foliage? Yes. I mean, it looks exaggerated and um, th this is the aesthetic. Really? Okay. Yeah, this is the aesthetic. You probably, you know, so so you, you want to keep it as a pretty exaggerated like this. So you did, you did see this is a triangle. And so then now what I would do is really give it a nice solid shadow here. And maybe something on this side too, since the light is coming from this direction. Um, okay. And, and keep that, you know, and very much like that in here too. Very along the edges, you know. Now I don't mind you taking a, an edge out here and, and scattering an edge with a little foliage or whatever. Just so long as we feel that blockiness, like, like I do in here. That's what you want to feel everywhere, that, that real blockiness. So you're, you're definitely getting it in the mountain, and definitely down here, maybe a little bit more, a little bit more up in here. Otherwise, okay. got it. I mean, and maybe emphasize the shadows to make it blocky in the mountain, too. Yeah. I could see you even blocky, blocking these things out. I mean, I can see you're using this sort of transitionary tone between the light and the shadow here. I don't think yeah. you need it. Do you like the view right here? See how you're keeping it real jagged right there? Yeah. I do it like that. Okay. You got it right there. You you got it right here too. You got it there. This is this is fine. When you get into too much of this, you start. This is starting to. I call that modeling the form. You're going from light, sort of half tone. I mean, I'm sorry, from light to half tone to shadow to dark to the shadow. And the, the more you do of that, the, the less of the aesthetic you see. So 
So there's okay. a there's a sweet little medium we want to get to. And that's all. Just just wedging and blocking off a few more forms. Maybe seeing a little bit, maybe maybe try some adventurous color in your shadows up here and light. Mm. I could see, you know, uh, some little some warmer things. Maybe even light, maybe even some bluer things in the in the light. That's a little dark, but um, you know. Oh, that's great! Yes. Yeah. Just just for adventurous color, that maybe not having any. I know uh, if you look at the red, yellow, blue thing, Cezanne's doing it all over the place. He does it all over. The place. I learned it by looking at Cezanne. Huh. So. Remember, first and foremost, um, Cezanne is a, he's a composer and an esthetic. That's what they call them. Like a, an aesthetic athlete, you know. <laughs> an aesthetic, an, <laughs> but no, really, an esthetic. That, they actually, that, it's actually a word, believe it or not. I didn't make that up. Um, where they put the aesthetic before they put the rendition. So, so is Degas. So is uh, Van Gogh, etc. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. All right. Did I miss anybody? All right. All right. Good. Rob, well, I get it. I finally did one where I didn't miss everybody. Hey, George. Just by the way, you, you left your uh, you left your mic on earlier, and we were listening to the politics. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Rob. Yes. This is Shelley. I just want to say thank you very much. This was an excellent demo. Oh, and great. I'm glad. Excellent. I'm glad. I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah that, terrific. It was great. Fantastic. More, and, yeah, yeah, and, yes. and you know, I, 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 I am going to, since, that's, since that was successful, I'm going to think about this for a workshop in the future. We'll see. We'll see how good my I might be overloaded this turn, but if I'm not, uh, I'll do a workshop. And and I like your idea of using like you know like like today I got frustrated with the first one, so I decided well, you know I'm going to try the second one with flat brush. But that yeah. would be fun to yeah. if you could demo that too. <laughs> yeah, but you know that 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 is mm -hmm. good flat um, flat brush or even um um. Messing around with the palette knife, you can use it in. Oh, in that'd be cool. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. another counterintuitive thing, but you can use it. So. All right, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Rob. Okay, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.